What up, y'all? It's Destiny Rogers. I'm hanging with Rob here on Front Row Live. I listened to Lockdown, and as soon as I heard it, like, I was just like, I need to figure out who this is. Like, I need to sit down with her because, like, something's about to happen with this artist. Like, congratulations with the track, with the EP, with your Thanks success so, so far. But, like, talk to me about, like, creating Lockdown. And, like, you know, this is different. This is, like, the song that kind of sticks out from the EP. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the song that I appreciated because, like, I get to actually listen to your, vo uh, your vocals a lot more. Oh. Uh, you got to get to feature it. So, like, yeah. talk to me about this track in particular and, like, your creative process behind it. Lockdown was actually created um, when I was 17. It was a couple years ago um, when I first started working with my boys, The Stereotypes. This was one of the first records we ever created wow. wh while I was a youngin'. But um, something about the record just stood out to us. Like you said, like, it, it shows more of my vocal range yeah. and stuff compared to all of my other music. So um, we definitely wanted to keep this record on the EP because it shows my voice and, it, and it's more, more meaningful right. than my my other records are meaningful too but this one is just stripped yeah. roads and vocals so this definitely shows my inner vocal now, now <laughs> being, being that this is like kind of your first tracks like you know i'm sure it's nerve-wracking like being in the in the vocal booth for the first time working with like mm -hmm. strangers for the very first mm -hmm. time too like mm -hmm. so you know vulnerability like what, what was that like for you as you like jumped into the studio for the first time and started creating music yeah i mean i was actually pretty comfortable because i was already making music before i had i had met the guys mm -hmm. so um but it was a little bit scary because i was working with songwriters before i've yeah. never worked with songwriters before i've only i've done everything myself right. but conveying that message with other people and getting other people's ideas mm -hmm. and um like it was just it's just very fun and super comfortable so these That's guys cool. are yeah they're dope so t talk to me about the stereotypes like what you know how did you guys how did that relationship kind of start between all of you guys and like what was it about them that made you want to I mean because you're doing everything with them mm -hmm. so like what made you want to stick with them well so we actually met from a family friend back from my hometown Lodi California okay. there and in, he's an intern here at the studio and he showed the video a video of me singing on YouTube um, mm -hmm. location Khalid it was a cover video um, showed a video of me to them and, and they were like yo we want to meet her so literally like a week later I came out to LA met them and that same night I met them they're like okay like let's Let's work let's see what we can do with you right. and so Dang. ended up coming out to LA worked with them for a whole week straight and then they're like can you come back next month and I was like yeah again I was a senior <laughs> in high school so I'm like about to graduate and my family's kind of like pushing college on me a little bit so yeah. I, there I was like man if I can work with these guys and make something of it like now I gotta go to school I'll get out of that <laughs> so definitely awesome. working with them um, just got super comfortable. I was seeing them all the time mm -hmm. and definitely started developing a, developing, a, developing a relationship with them. And mm -hmm. like they started were becoming close to me and like, like brothers in a way. And it, I was just telling them about my life and just trusting them with my music and, and right. where I trusted the path that they have paved for me. Right. So, yeah. Now, now, as far as like your artist development goes, I feel like church had a big role in that. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. you know, how do you feel like church really impacted you as an artist, you mm -hmm. kind of discovering your voice, you kind of discovering like how to perform live for people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. My dad, he's a worship leader. That's how I got into music. So once I started getting into music a little bit, my dad was like, yo, like, do you want to do you want to sing on Sunday? Do you want to play guitar? And then my dad ended up teaching me how to play other instruments like bass. Uh, piano and drums mm -hmm. and so one week if a drummer was sick destiny can you fill in all right sure so I was on drums one week nice. same with bass so like I was definitely doing it every Sunday I was always singing or playing guitar and all that and then I started getting involved in my youth group and being the worship leader for my youth group when I was only like 13 so I was in the music very young and doing all the time so that's how I definitely got better at right. me being a musician and it's kind of cool because I feel like a lot of those artists that are insane with like vocalization and singing yeah. and production and all that stuff mm -hmm. like come from that kind of background where they grew up in the church oh, yeah. um do you feel like you're singing you discovering your sound like mm -hmm. kind of came out from the church or did it come yeah. after you started working church, with the stereotype yeah church was a huge impact on me for sure but when i met the guys they already kind of heard my sound and they noticed something different which yeah. i feel like that's maybe why they wanted to work with me so bad i'm right. not sure but definitely the guys helped me get it out there and and helped me figure out i knew my sound but it was hard for me to explain it to them mm. so we all figured it out and created and That's cool. it's history now we come in <laughs> so i mean it hasn't been that long maybe like a year and a half maybe two that you guys have been collaborating yeah it's been february 2018 was when i signed with them okay. so about 
a little over two years. So within within that time frame, like, do you feel, do you see, like, a big difference in the artist you were when you first started working most with them definitely. to now? Yeah, most definitely. I was a cover artist. I was only singing cover <laughs> songs. And I was just, I was making my own music, but I yeah. didn't know how to put anything out. I didn't know how, right. what a strategy was. I didn't have a plan. But I was making my own music, but mainly my main focus was posting covers on YouTube. So. How do they challenge you every time you guys get into the studio to work on a new track? They, I think... I don't know. It ain't really, I don't know. It ain't really challenging. I don't think. I mean, like I said, I'm so comfortable and creative. Yeah. Like when all of our minds come together, it's, it's never really challenging. It's just, it's easy. A little. But as far as your writing process, like, you know, you mentioned you've, you've worked with like co-writers before. Like mm -hmm. how do you feel like those kind of sessions have kind of impacted you as far as your songwriting goes? No, they definitely impacted me. Like working with songwriters, it, it takes me a while to write a song, but some songwriters I work with go in the booth mm -hmm. and they write while they're in the booth, if that makes sense. Like uh, they'll just freestyle off the dome. They don't even write anything down. Yeah. They'll just go off. And so I'm like, wow, like that's crazy. Right. Like I want to get on that level someday, you know? But so like being surrounded by songwriters that have worked in the industry for a long time and has made hits mm -hmm. like is so inspiring and definitely leaves a huge impact on me so when you sit down and write your own music now like mm -hmm. do you see a big difference in like the kind of vocabulary that you use or like yeah, most definitely like i'm i'm i started getting really like usually when i would write i just write whatever i wanted but now i'm like kind of picky about how i want to say things make right. sure it doesn't sound corny or too okay because I'm, I'm 20 now so like i don't want my songs to sound like a 15 year old girl you know <laughs> so i'm definitely like cautious about how i say things and how i want the listeners to hear my lyrics right. yeah and now i feel like you've discovered who you are as an artist mm -hmm. is that safe to say and like who are you as an artist now that you've kind of seen that i mean shoot me as an artist i'm just I'm just Destiny Rogers. I mean, I'm just I'm just myself. Like, I never ever like want to be compared to any other artist. But I mean, it's gonna happen. But at least for me, I hope when people listen to my music, they can hear a difference. Like, okay, she's definitely who she is, and she's definitely has her own lane in the industry right. and has her own wave. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I definitely want to be that that impact. Now, going back to songwriters, is Jeanette Claudette one of them? Yes. Talk to me about your collaborations with Jeanette and like I how love, those were. I love Jeanette. Like that's my girl. <laughs> like her her husband is also a great friend of mine, August Rigo. Yeah. Um they're like They just had a baby too, they like crazy. They just had a baby and the baby was born on my birthday, dog. What is that? Yeah, September thirteenth. We're both Virgos. I haven't met her yet. But yeah, Jeanette is my sister for real. Yeah. So she wrote on the record Lolo that I have out. Um, but yeah, great, great people, great girl, love her, That's love awesome. him. Yeah. So, you know, when writing Lolo with her, like, um, what, I'm sure it was a completely different from all the other writers that you work yeah, with. Um, cause I, the last time I spoke to her, she was doing like some K-pop stuff, like, which is crazy. Like, so, um, you know, how did she, you know, how did her way of r songwriting kind of like impact you on this track mm -hmm. for Lolo? Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Um, so Jeanette, we have never worked together on a song like she would either work with the stereotypes and i'd come in on a session and mm. kick it or um she'd come in a session of mine and kick it but yeah. so lola was the first record that we got to sit down and work on together we already had the production and the guys were showing me like a list of beats and lolo lolo's production was the main one that stuck out to us mm. so me and Jeanette were already just vibing we just thought of melodies and like i don't know she's just so creative and her being an artist as well like is just super yeah. super sick i feel like it makes it easier when they're also an artist when they're also an artist yeah because they have the same dream as is right. me so they're not just strictly a songwriter they're also an artist and have goals and uh, ambitions and stuff so that, that's dope so we're here in the studio obviously because you're yeah. working on some stuff like yeah. what can fans expect for for this upcoming year a tour yes. more music just a bunch of shows man y'all stay tuned we we coming 2020 we out here destiny rogers remember the name and then la lastly you know music skateboarding like i feel like that's something we don't we don't get with females mm -hmm. nowadays yeah. um so you know why is skateboarding so important to you and why is music so important to you well skateboarding was important to me because i started skateboarding first before music i was six years old when i started skating um before i got into music skating was literally my first love my first passion i wanted to go pro i wanted to go on the x games i wanted to do it all with skating i wanted to take skating so far but when i started doing music 
music really just impacted me and, and hit me differently than skating did. Mm -hmm. But um, I just use skateboarding like as another outlet to show like my fans that I only don't do music, but I can skate. And like you said, not many females skate. And I think it's dope to show that side to inspire other women to do what they want to do and not really feel, you know, embarrassed to do boy things. Right. Yeah. It's okay to be a tomboy, right? It's okay to be a tomboy, man. It's okay. <laughs> So to close us off, can we expect maybe for 2020, can we work on this Billie Eilish collaboration or a tour? Yes. Please, can we like put yes. it up in the universe? Absolutely. Billie Eilish, Jesse oh, Rogers collaboration. We come in. Let's go. Let's do it's this. happening now because right. it's here. Let's make it happen. It's on tape. All right, that's it. And you're going to go pick up some shoes after this, right? Yeah, whatever those are. I need yeah. to get the name of them. Right. And where would you get them, though? Uh, StockX. StockX. Ugh, they were probably like thousands of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me. You guys, be sure to check out Destiny Rogers. Hanging out here in the studio. Thanks for watching on Front Row Live.